So the exercise I want to do is a thought exercise. You have the sheep. I wanted to go through the the the, um, the example. It's a, it's an example I quite like. I think it illustrates quite a lot of concepts. Uh, this lecture is actually taken from a, a another course. Well, it was actually another lecture. It was a public understanding lecture I gave a long time ago at the British Science Edinburgh Science Festival. So it's got things like animations and attempts at humour in it, which may. But anyway, there we go. So we want to predict traffic flow. I don't think this video is going to work. Okay, they've got a video here. But you might want to predict traffic flow because you want to avoid congestion. Okay, and that, there's a video here. But I, but I mean, apparently Bangkok traffic is terrible. So you'll, if you've seen the video, the traffic's completely stationary. So you might want to predict traffic flow for a number of reasons. You might want to say, how am I going to dynamically alter the uh, traffic light to, to, to prevent congestion? Or you might be saying, if I put an extra lane on this motorway, is it going to help the traffic? So, so predicting traffic flow is actually quite an important thing. Um, so what you do is you build a computer model. And this is actually a picture of a computer model that was run on one of the EPCC parallel machines called a connection machine almost, almost 20 years ago when they were putting a roundabout, which is still there, the Newbridge roundabout, it's still there. So Britain, we love roundabouts, but we love them so much, we love roundabouts with traffic lights as well. So, so, so the, uh, the, the program simulated the traffic to try and optimize the traffic signals to get the traffic through, um, uh, through most efficiently. Um, so we're going to do a very simple model. So it's a very simple cellular automaton. It's the most simple one you can imagine. We're going to divide the road into a series of cells, and here I've got seven cells. And a cell is either going to be one or zero. It's either going to be occupied or unoccupied. So I've got cars in them. And the update rule is very simple. Each step, a car moves forward if it can and doesn't if it can't. Okay? And this is done instantaneously. We don't say that car moves forward. Oh, no, that one can and that one can. What we do is we look at it. We say that car can move, that one can't, and that one can. And then we move them all. Okay? It's an instantaneous update. It doesn't depend on the order of the update. So you can see that. Both those cars would move, then both those cars would move. And very quickly, actually, you get this 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 effect where everybody moves. Okay. So you could do this by moving pawns on a chessboard. This is a very simple example of a cellular automaton. The more um, commonly known one is, is the 2D um, uh, Conway's Game of Life. So way back when I was young and computers weren't invented, me and my brother used to do the Game of Life on the chessboard with half P pieces as the... A little bit sad. But anyway, uh, that's what we used to do. So you could, you could do this by moving pawns on a chessboard. You could have a chessboard, which is your road, and you could have pawns on it, and you could move them along. Okay? So it does actually predict a few interesting features. If you have traffic lights and the cars are lined up, they don't all move off as a block. They move off when the lights go green. They move off in, in a reasonably um, a, um, realistic way. And actually, it does predict congestion, not surprisingly, if you look at the average speed of the cars against the density of the cars, clearly you'll see that if you're less than 50% full, at some point they get this car gap, car gap thing, and they all move at speed one. But above 50% filling, you get a drop in the average speed. And at 100% filling, it's complete congestion. Now, if, you, if you're a physicist, you'll just say this is trivial, which it is. It's just like a semiconductor. And, and, and below 50% filling, the, the cars, the electrons, move to the right with speed 1. And above 50% filling, the holes move to the left with speed 1. So it is actually something of a trivial model in that sense. But it's nice to think about it, cars than, than electrons and holes, um, I think, anyway. So um, we're going to get... OK, so that's... We're going to get somebody to do the pawns. So what we're going to do is we're, measure the, we're going to measure the speed in car operations per second, which is conveniently stands for COPS. That was supposed to be the, the humour. So we're going to get... Um, Bobby Fisher, who's unfortunately has died since um, since this lecture was written, who is a slightly bonkers chess champion in the seventies, um, to do it. So I reckon that if he did it, he could he could hop them along like that. I reckon he could update this model at about um, one cop, uh, sorry, three cops, uh, two cops, two car operations per second. He could do about two operations per second. So that, that's, you know, there you go. That's not particularly interesting. The question is, if we had three Bobby Fishers, could they do the model at six car operations per second? Can we parallelize the model to do the calculation quicker? So um, what I'm going to do is I've got a parallel traffic model. My road is of length 15. It's a distributed memory model. So although conceptually my road is of length 15, in practice, 
you all have a road of length five. So everybody, every process in the simulation has a, their own um, their own chessboard, and it's only got five spaces on it. And we've got three people A, B, and C, and I can't remember who they are because I don't think I've updated it. B is Gordon. Uh, B is Gordon Brown, who's our who was the prime minister, was the chancellor, or the, is the chancellor of Edinburgh University in his long haired hippie days. Uh, C is our, our glorious leader, David Cameron, and uh, A is, I don't know why I changed it to S, is potentially our glorious leader of the future, Alex Salmon. So they're worried about the traffic in Edinburgh, or the traffic somewhere, the traffic at the border, when we've got border crossings in, maybe that's what they're worried about. Um, but, so, so what they're going to say is, okay, we're going to update our model, and of course it's going to go three times as fast, because before, we're rather doing 15 cars, we're all going to do five cars, that's going to be great. But you immediately you see a problem. Gordon has a problem because he says, well, I can't update this car because I don't know if David's got a space here or not because that's on his. And also, Gordon doesn't know what, well, um, Alec doesn't know about this car and also David doesn't know what to put here, okay? So, so they can update that space, that space, and that space. They can update the interior uh, cells, but they can't update the edges. So immediately you see you need communication here. So what needs to happen is uh, Alec and Gordon need to phone each other and tell and say what's happening. They're saying, like, I've got a car here, you've got a car. So Alec knows his car can't move. And then Gordon phones David and says, look, I've got a, I've got a, a car here. And Dick, David says, well, I've got a gap here. So that he knows he can move it. So then they can locally, there's two important aspects here. A, they can locally update this, the interior cells because they, they, they have all the information for those cells but they can't update the exterior ones unless they've communicated. Once they've communicated, they can update the locally to get the same answer. Now, parallel computing is getting about getting a fast answer, but normally it's, you want to get the, the right answer. Um, so you want to get the same answer in this model. So you can see that, and then we just go through the same thing again. They phone each other, they phone each other, and then we move, okay? So, okay, so what we're going to do, the thought experiment, which is on the exercise sheet, which you should have, is um, thinking about how you would do this. I mean, I've given you the, the sort of the model, but thinking about how you would parallelize this, where the three of you are in different offices and phoning each other. But think about how, where does the communications need to take place? And more, more difficult, how would you do it if you could do Synchronous phone, synchronous communications, which is phoning, or asynchronous um, sending emails. Is there a difference there? The other thing you have to do, I don't just want you to move the cars, I want you to compute the average velocity. At each step, I want you to say, well, there were eight cars, four of them moved, that means the average velocity was 0.5. So that's a global quantity, so you need to think at what stage <coughs> do you... Um, um, do you uh, do some kind of, you know, how, how do you compute that? And also, I'd like you to think about how you actually write it in code. I mean, pseudocode, if you were to actually program this up, what would you do? Okay. Um, 